You gotta do my whole body for this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> touch on the progression here um, before I do that I kind of just want to touch base on a few factors that I take into consideration on when I'm going to prog progress my sets um, when the load would increase why how etc so some movements are kind of just better suited for certain rep ranges um, and some modifications in load are better suited for some exercises like heavy compounds uh, things like dumbbells might go up in weight every other week but not every week so that's one way to monitor the load for those exercises so like something like a um, cable upright row where the machine goes for, they have these random fucking jumps in the machines if they don't have those little plates you can stack on it'd be like 90 pounds 110 pounds it's super weird 20 pound jump, like who would do that? In those circumstances, you can just go up in sets, you can go up in the rep achievements, things of that nature. So, on some dumbbell exercises, they'll even keep the weight consistent across the entire MESA cycle. Cable flies, you're going to notice. I did 60 each uh, both weeks, and I just added a set while beating uh, the reps on the first set and then including the next set. So, um, what I do is just basically based on the soreness feedback from the previous session. So in my notes here, um, Smith close grip bench, this whole session, I noted that basically by the time I was going into the next session, I was completely fine. My soreness only lasted for like half a day. Um, everything was good. So I decided to increase the set here and increase the rep achievement here. Um, I also increased sets in my other push session. So heavy compound exercises, isolated exercises, machine-based exercises, they all kind of have these intuitive rep ranges that make sense like for example squats you wouldn't do sets of 20. if you did do sets of 20 if the work you're doing is probably like eh. leg press if you did sets of six to ten probably going to be going a little too heavy on that exercise upright rows sets of six would be ridiculous barbell curls sets of six would be ridiculous um but you can also check online. There are many articles that we wrote about how you can find uh, what rep range is best suited for you for the exercises. And it all, a lot of it boils down to the stimulus fatigue ratio. So if you are doing squats and you feel a lot of that axial loading and, and it leads to a bunch of systemic fatigue because you have to go so heavy on squats and you're also trying to do sets of six, then maybe you could just reduce the load, do sets of, you know, 10 to 15. Um, if it leads to a better SFR, so more stimulus for less fatigue, probably a good idea to go ahead and, and uh, try that out. And we have plenty of articles online. I can uh, try to find them and have them pop up like last video. Uh, but with that being said, I want to go through these. So this is my quote unquote lighter session of pushing for the week. Uh, what I did here was Smith close grip bench for sets of uh, 10 to 15. And as you'll notice on this first week, I did 265 for 1411. So the next week, and I made a note here because it's a different Smith machine that I use. I used one in Montana, and then now I'm using the one at my primary gym. It was a little different. Floating Smith and not a slanted. That's what I put in the comment, if you can see that. Floating Smith, not slanted Smith. So Floating Smith actually kind of feels a little lighter. There's less resistance. It, it almost, um, what I did was I added 10 pounds. And the weight seemed similar. And the way, like I said last time, uh, your fibers don't detect the literal fucking weight. They detect the tension at the fiber level. And if I'm getting 265 for 1411 at 3RAR 
or 4 RIR. And then the next week I get 15, 13, and the weight's relatively similar. I think that I picked pretty well. Uh, 275 is about 265 on this new Smith. If not, the volume definitely went up because I beat the, the reps and I dropped the uh, proximity to failure a little bit. So 265, 14, 11, I went to 275, 4, uh, 15, 13. Here I did one set last week, got a good pump. Again, though, didn't get very much soreness. So in session, um, the fly super center wide push-up, when I was done with that first set, I didn't – I had a good pump, but I, I was like, no, oh, this isn't really limiting. And based on my so soreness perception from last week, how my pump was this week, I was like, mm, we could probably add a set. So I added a set with the, with the same load and uh, progressed one set in this session and I think one or two sets in my other pushing session which increased the total pushing volume by about three sets from the first week to the second week because the first week was the MEV, the intro coming off of a deload and uh, I started artificially probably a little bit too, uh, too low in volume for those muscle groups so moving into MEV since week one of a mesocycle the MAV is more round MAV anyway. We're now floating. The MAV is floating, floating value. You have to go up and you have to match it. I increased to the, the three sets for the pushing volume, and I uh, evenly spaced across exercises or across the sessions, um, depending on the exercises and depending on what the session was for me. So this session was like my lighter session, which is why I only increased one set. This one up here. Increase uh, one and I, I believe I actually did two here. I don't know why this is. Yeah, I did. I believe ten nine. Yeah, that should be a two. Wait up your shit, Jared. Check the video to see if it was 10 or 9. So, three total, and then uh, noted after this one, I was actually, after all this volume, I was recovering just on time to meet my performance on this day. See, meeting my performance here, meeting my performance here, beating it a little bit. So the soreness was good, which means I'll probably only increase a couple of sets the next week and not three total pushing sets as I go up. But, um, yeah, somewhat unorganized ramblings. I would like to create some format to break this down a little more simply. But there's one more thing that I want to show you guys. Okay, so one more thing I want to show you guys. I'm just going to put it right here, okay? How to progress weekly in volume depending on your modifications or depending on the modification for a coach. So for my client, if I increase their sets in weight, they stay the same, and then they beat last week's reps by one, one rep only. So if sets and weight stay the same, so let's say this was 65. Remember, I didn't do this, I did this on the first week. Say this was 65. Sets three, sets three, and this week I had done 14, 12, 11, then that would be why I increased meeting the reps by one rep. So volume increase was via the reps. If as the coach, my client comes in and they see if the sets go up and the weight stays the same, then they rep match from the last week and they perform the newly added set at that weekly RIR. So in this circumstance, Again, I didn't do these, so I'm just going to use this as an example. If the sets go up and the weight stays the same, 80, right? 20, 18, 17. Then that means what they did in this next week, whenever they saw that there was a set increase but no weight increase, they went up and they rep match for the first three sets, right? First three sets rep match. And then that second set was taken to the newly added uh, relative intensity or reps in reserve which is 2 RIR, or 3 RIR from 4 RIR. And then if the sets stay the same, 
uh, but not by the weight goes up, then rep match only from the previous week. So, for example, had this been 60, right, and this was 65, then all they would do is rep match from the previous. So instead of me doing this 15, 13, 11, they would try to aim for 14, 12, 11. Because the load is going up, then that means the relative intensity is probably dropping a little bit due to the fact that load is higher, which means 14 at 65 versus 14 at 60 would decrease the relative intensity. So this is one way to do it if you get a plan from a coach and you see volume modifications already, but to do them yourself, you can refer back to the stuff I said in the beginning. So basically, to recap, some exercises are better suited for certain rep ranges. You can find what rep range gives you the best pump, soreness, etc. We have articles on that. I'll try to pop them up. Um, if you feel squats are better in the seven to 10 rep range for you over the 10 to 15, totally fine. On your second leg session for the week, you could do 15 to 20 rep range on the leg press because machine-based exercises are better suited for those higher rep ranges. The heavy compounds are better suited for the uh, heavier to middle rep ranges. And to that point, the heavy compounds are better suited probably for increases in load as well. So if on this, if the rep range was the it's fine. I'll, I'll use this session since I was using it anyway. If the rep range was the 15 to 20 um, or 10 to 15 rep range for this exercise, right? And these are technically the same load since I put that comment. Then that means I went to the top of the, the rep range. And this next week, I would go to um, 280 or add a set or add load and a set depending on how the soreness was from the last session. So if soreness from this session, since we are adapting as we increase, even if, if we increase volume, is soreness, I was already adapting fairly well to this stimuli, and I basically didn't get any soreness. And then during week three session, I moved it to 280. I got 15, 13. I rep match, right? And on that second set, I get done, and I'm like, hmm, I don't really have too much of a pump. Last week, my soreness was decent. Then you could go ahead and add a set. And uh, these are just kind of intuitive thought processes to apply to your own plan. Because if you're not getting a pump and you weren't really sore, it's almost guarantee you're not going to be growing from the volume you're doing uh, outside of special circumstances, coming back from injuries, intro weeks, things of that nature. So... Soreness perception, uh, performance, and your pump during the session from the exercise are great ways to decide where you want to increase volume and how. Again, these are just like pretty inconsistent ramblings, but hopefully they're applicable to you and your training. And maybe at some point I'll make an artificial uh, plan, like week one through two, the entire plan, make a longer video, and do the entire thing, how I rated the soreness and things like that. Yeah, so I'll look for those articles to pop them up. Um, outside of that, if you guys have questions, shoot them in the bottom, and I will try to clarify anything that you may want. So, 
Today, Jared and I are doing chest focused push with biceps as well. We don't do biceps on our pulling days because our pulling days are so much shoulder work and back work that biceps would just not really fit in. So we do bicep work on our pushing days, which is cool because then they're fresh. I also tend to find that a mild tricep pump, sometimes a big tricep pump, really makes curling feel easier on the elbows. I don't know if you guys ever found that. But uh, what it is weird is we're doing hamstrings. <laughs> Why, right? So we train legs Wednesday, Saturday, but we're playing around with the idea that like sometimes when you train hamstrings really extra hard, especially if you train them first, it kind of takes away from your quad workout after. But it probably doesn't take away nearly as much from something very unrelated like chest. So we're doing hamstring curls at the beginning right now of chest. That means they're going to be sore when we train quads, but the way we train quads is very, very quad isolatory. So it probably shouldn't have a huge effect uh, with the hamstring training. We'll see. It's a little bit of an experiment just to try to spread out the total systemic fatigue a little bit. We'll see if it works. Yeah. Your favorite song? Huh? Your favorite song's on. I love the Miami beat. I just want to go to Miami again. <laughs> oh, it's Beyonce. Yeah. <laughs>